Good morning. Olive is gone. It's actually mid-morning. Mid-morning cup of coffee. Went for a run this morning. We've got a charity 5K coming up. Figured I'd run a 5K this morning. Hated every second of it. I milled up all this oak for trimming our house uh, last weekend. And when you air dry it, it takes a couple of years. I'm going to build a kiln in my garage. Be able to fork it in with the tractor so I don't have to restack everything. And just going to have a dehumidifier and some fans going in there. Maybe a space heater, but it's, that seems a little sketchy to me. So we'll see how it goes. This is a project that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm building a wood kiln in my garage, and I'm sure there's not many people that have one of these. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you the results and how well the kiln works. And I'm going to explain something that I didn't get on video, but it was a game changer on the effectiveness of the kiln. Now this door never gets used. I actually didn't even know that light switch worked. But this bottom jam is non-existent take the jam completely off and just framing it in i don't need a door in the back of my garage hmm i'll probably should just take it all off stink bugs all over the place they're stinky i very quickly realized after buying my sawmill that owning a sawmill and milling your own lumber is essentially useless unless you have a good way to dry the lumber Air drying lumber typically takes anywhere from one to two years, and I definitely did not want to wait that long for my lumber to dry, hence the kiln build. For anyone that is unaware, no matter what time of year you cut a tree down, it's filled with moisture. Because it's filled with moisture, the wood is all swelled up, and after you cut the logs into lumber, the moisture slowly starts making its way out of the lumber. When this happens, the wood shrinks because it's no longer swelled up with all that moisture. And if you were to try to build something when the lumber is all swelled up, as the moisture slowly starts leaving the wood over time, it would cause whatever you built to get all warped and twisted. Well, I am out of lumber. That means that tomorrow morning, I need to run the sawmill. It is an absolutely beautiful, sunny morning. I just love getting up and getting to work in the morning. So I'm gonna fire up the sawmill and cut some boards. All right, so you guys are gonna get a quick demo of the sawmill. This thing has paid for itself over and over. It's super handy to have exactly for this reason. I was working on a project and I ran out of lumber. Rather than driving all the way to town to buy more lumber, I was able to mill up a log that I just had laying around. And it just so happened that this log was cut off my family's property, which is kind of cool. And I know what you're going to say, I'm building with wet lumber, but this tree was dead for a while before it came down, so it was already mostly dry. Plus, this is white pine, and white pine dries super fast. Lumber is cut and ready to get back to work. And I have to remember to feed the kitty. It truly never stops to amaze me what people throw away. I was driving down the road and saw these two bundles of insulation just sitting out by someone's garbage can. And you better believe I slammed on the brakes and went back and snatched them. This project has gotten delayed by this little fella. Oh, hi. Hi, Miss Mia. This is little Miss Mia. My wife has been looking for a dog for a long time, and we got it from the Humane Society. But of course, I had to build a kennel and a dog house and get a crate and get her cleaned up. She just hangs out around me while I'm working on stuff, so that's not bad. As you can see, I'm just stuffing the insulation in the wall cavities. I think it'll work just fine like this. I'm not going to put any OSB or any sheeting or anything on the inside of the kiln. I don't think it's necessary, and I think this will be just fine. There is another type of kiln that I thought about building. It's called a solar kiln. And a solar kiln is basically a shed with a clear roof. So it lets a lot of sunlight in and it gets really warm inside, just like a greenhouse. And one of the benefits of a solar kiln is that the temperature cycling of the warm day and the cool night can also help prevent the wood from drying too fast or hard casing. Sometimes when you try to dry the wood too fast, it will get hard, dry and hard on the outside which will make it harder for the moisture in the very center of the wood to make its way out. The reason why I opted out of this option is because I wanted to be able to run the kiln year round. And where I'm from, I don't think a solar kiln would be that effective under a foot of snow. Well, I think I'm about ready for a bunk of lumber. Off the side, I have this other tarp that kind of goes back to the corner. So I'll have a little bit more room up here for the heater and the dehumidifier. And then I have a strip of wood 
through to the bottom of this tarp so when I'm putting lumber in and out, I can just roll it up, put it up out of the way, bring the lumber in. I have to hand load all these 10 foot boards because they won't fit through the nine foot garage door. Design flaw, I've read about these. So how the kiln works is there's fans on the back wall blowing air down and they push the warm air through the lumber, the bunks of lumber. And the tarps help keep the air moving in a circular pattern so there's always air moving across the lumber. All right, so I have the fans on. I have it loaded with lumber. I have my weight, not too much, but I do have some weight on top. The tarp is rolled up on a little strip of wood and there's weight on it. So there's air getting pulled in these holes here, pushing air. When you reach down and feel down near the bottom here, you can feel air coming out. The dehumidifier is running. It's time to build some doors. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, is that what you think? She's just, she's just so happy. All right, time to get busy on some doors. All right, here is one of the key items that really made the kiln start to perform well, adding the heat lamps. And then over in this corner, I have a dehumidifier and I have four 250 watt heat lamps that are wired up onto switches. I have two of them wired up onto one switch and then the other two are on two separate switches. So I can adjust the heat from outside the kiln. I put my remote sensor for the thing that reads the temperature and the humidity in the kiln and then I can monitor what the temperature and relative humidity is at. Got this on Amazon on the Lignomat Ligno Mat website. They are like $300, but I found this one on Amazon for $240. It's really expensive, but it's essential if you're trying to dry your own lumber to have a good pinless moisture meter. So this one came with the chart for a bunch of different wood species. This is red oak, so I set it to number 60. Set 60, and then if I hit set again, this one has two depths. So this one, the, the SD model, has two depths. So it'll read at a depth of three quarters of an inch or one quarter of an inch. So I'm going to set it to three quarters of an inch and then I'm going to click read and I can set it to scan. If you hit hold, it'll hold that moisture and drop it on and see what we have for moisture. Reading 8.8%, 8.2%. I can't read it in here. So I'm going to hit set or hit hold and it'll hold the value 7.8%, 5.8%. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with where everything's at. Anywhere from six to eight and a half percent, which is pretty, pretty good, uh, dry enough to work with. So building this kiln has taken the drying time from one to two years down to about three weeks, four weeks, which is really cool. I am going to get it pulled out of the kiln and moved into the wood shop because all of this is going to be used for trim in my house, which is going to make my wife happy. We have not had trim in our house in quite some time because I tore all the old stuff out because I didn't like it. If you want to follow along for the whole project, and if you're curious about anything about the process of cutting, milling, drying, and building your own trim, you can check out my channel because I'm going to document the whole thing on it. All right, so let's get this pulled out, and I have another batch of lumber that's going in. A few more details on time and temperature. I'm able to get the kiln up to about 130 degrees if I run the dehumidifier continuously, but then it gets too dry in there. As of now, I think that working up to about 120 degrees for the first week and then holding 120 degrees at 30% relative humidity for another two-ish weeks will get four-quarter boards down to about 65 to 8.5% moisture content. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more of my projects and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I post a new video. Leave any questions in the comments and I'll be sure to answer.